Okay, so yesterday we were uh, building the uh, contract terms. So yesterday we have seen from the contract management how to do contract authoring, and then we have seen a class library, and then we have also seen how to import uh, legacy contracts into the Haribas. Uh, second, uh, we started uh, going through the contract terms. So let's continue the contract terms. Before that, any doubts from the previous class? Okay, good. So let's go with the main edge. A like lot of documents are created. Uh, I haven't, I haven't practiced yet. So once I start practicing, then I'll come to you know. So maybe by next weekend, I'll let you know. Sure, sure. Not if not I, any doubt. So I want to see. So you're seeing my screen, right? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Documents. So we are opening the contract terms. Open. Pricing terms. Line item was added. Edit. So pricing and discount. So we we are building line item level uh, terms. So at line item, you can build your pricing and discount. The first thing we will be doing is tired pricing. So if you are clicking as, click this, it says minimum amount. If I'm spending minimum amount of 10,000, I will be getting, it is shown as a percentage. I'll get 100 discount. Suppose if I'm buying for up to 50,000, and I'll get 200 discount. That's how you are defining based on amount based volume pricing. If you want to give a pricing uh, as a percentage, then 10,000 if I'm buying, I will be getting 1%. If I'm entering 50,000, I will be getting 2%. That means anything value from 10,000 to 50,000, I will be getting 2% of discount. If you want to use for the cumulative, then you need to cumulative. Or if you want to use for per order, this discount will be applicable for one individual order. And then you have one more quantity base. In other words, suppose if I purchase 100 quantity, I'll be getting a discount of 10 rupees. Suppose if I'm buying between 101 to 500, I'll be getting 20 rupees as a discount pricing. Then that same way, if this is mentioned as a volume, and I can also enter as a percentage. Minimum quantity 100, I'll be getting 1% and 2%. So that way you can build this tired based pricing and the next is term based pricing. So what is term based? For so see how you get this information? How you get the information? So I understand. That's from the user. From so this. yeah, when we are dealing with the supplier or when we are getting the pricing information from the supplier, they are giving you a discount. They say, Sir, if you are being uh, the price I have quoted for one year, but if you are getting more than 50,000, I will give you this discount. Or if your value is more than one lakh, I will give you this discount. Same way, you will have a discount on the uh, payment themselves. Suppose you are paying cash, I will give you certain discount. If you are paying uh, 30 days, then there is a price difference. If you are paying 60 days, there is a payment. That is how you do the neg negotiation with the supplier. And for these levels, we are getting uh, this information from the business users. Business users will have this information on hand. They will be filling the detail. How they are filling the detail, we are showing them. This is how they need to do tired pricing and term based pricing. What is term based? The tired basis we have seen uh, between this range to this range, he will get one discount. If it is between this range to this range of quantity, he will be getting a discount. That four combination can be possible giving in tired based pricing. We can also give term based pricing. Suppose if it is a seasonal item, then you can use this option. Say, for example, start date beginning from april and beginning from april you will get two percentage suppose if you are set after june or july then you will get 
only to one percentage. So they will attract you to place the orders early so that you get a difference. Are also the seasonal prices are different. When summer season, the some items were costly, other items are cheaper. That's how if you have in uh, terms, then you can use this option either by percentage or you can do it by volume also. Suppose you are adding this, this basically you will be getting a discount price of 1000 IMR. If you are where the rate will be 1000, if it is after that, you will be giving the value as 1050. So that is how you can build your conditions using term based pricing as well as tired based pricing. That you need to enter so, in. Yeah, go ahead. So this is the job of a consultant or a business user? Business user, business user. What we are doing is we are creating a contract. Nothing, uh, this is nothing for a consultant, but you need to tell them how they want to enter these prices. If they are asking, I have a negotiation like this, where I need to enter. Then you need to say, if you want to edit at the item level, you can go into item level and give your pricing at this level. Got it? Okay. Uh, Shri, uh, one, uh, you know, want to clarify the understanding of cumulative versus per order in the tiered pricing. Yeah. So, uh, is cumulative means like, so for example, let's have some example. Uh, let's put minimum minimum amount as 10,000 and uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, put 2% discount there and uh, let's have 20,000 there and, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, 20,000 and put 4% discount there. Okay, now this is the situation. Uh, if I set up like this, is it that, uh, you know, like uh, system is considering the releases, which are the dollar value of the releases, which are getting created from this contract. And um, so, and putting the uh, cumulative. Uh, so for example, there are uh, five uh, purchase orders already created from this contract. Okay, and uh, till now, $9,000 has been consumed. Now, when I'm creating the sixth purchase order, okay. uh, I am I am creating, uh, you know, for $2,000, okay. the sixth purchase order. So, yeah. when I am putting 2000 in the total price, okay. hitting enter, then the system is looking and figuring out the discount and putting in the um, uh, uh, sixth okay. release of uh, uh, 20... Uh, 2% like that sixth release because uh, when I'm doing the sixth release at that time I'm crossing the uh, minimum amount of 10,000. I got your question. So from 9,000 to 10,000 you will be getting this discount. Above 10,000 to the 10,000 you will be getting the 4%. So you will get only uh, suppose you would, the sixth order will be for 12,000 which you already mentioned 8,000 was used. So 9,000 to 10,000 for 1,000 dollars you will get 2% and after that amount you will be getting 4%. When you're no, using for what I'm saying is that till nine thousand dollar, I will not get any discount. Period, because uh, the minimum amount has not. No, been no, 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 no. This is up to zero to ten thousand. You will be getting two percentage. Oh, zero to ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. okay. And after that, ten thousand one two. Suppose you don't want that condition, then you okay. have to mention up to ten thousand zero. So then, if you are saying like this then you, this uh, information is not available. I mean, up to 10,000, you will not get any discount. Uh, yeah, okay. you got it. It is simple. It's the same like S4. You, you're just putting the discount. Yeah. How you're defining your discount terms. That's correct. all. That's correct. what it correct. is. Correct. 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 The placeholder okay. for uh, line item levels is using this. Uh, this is the place where you will uh, build your discount. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay, and is the uh, and is there are any restrictions on the terms of blanket uh, PO for this one, or you know, like both of or both of these uh, radio buttons are good for whether it is a standard release or a blanket PO? No, blanket release also you can give it line item level whatever the response they're giving you can give. Okay. That they may that doesn't make any difference. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm just keeping that price. Let it be, but I doubt because I have kept uh, ten thousand as maximum. I think. So then, let's see. Okay, then accounting information. This will come from your uh, user profile. So if it is compulsory, then you need to give. Otherwise, click OK. So now line item one is done. Milestones. Milestones is any of the project. There will be certain stages. If you want to release certain payment to a vendor based on certain milestone, then you can build up a milestone here. Uh, this may not be 
many people are not using, but some cases like project, if your go live is happening, we will release for certain amount. If it is on development or deployment, we will release certain amount. If they like that, if there are a milestone, it is not based on your pricing term, then you can build up your milestone. Let's create one milestone. Right, let's say preparation phase, completion of preparation. Now, preparation phase. You need to tell due date. This has to be done by 10. And who is the supplier contact? So then we will get an email alert from the supplier content that is an optional verifier. Who will verify whether this phase has been completed or not? That we can assign. If it is from production, if we are buying a service item and we do not know whether the service is done or not, then we need to assign service engineer address here. So they will be verifying and they will be saying that yes, this job has been completed. And you want to get a notification then you need to mention when you want to receive. Okay, probably I will just say two days before 10th April, I want to receive a notification. The notification will go to all the project team members. Oh, sorry, the whoever mentioned in the verifier will uh, get an email and also for the project owner. Click OK. 